Hello YouTube, this is Lone Pan Theus. Um, <clears throat> this video is going to be a little different from the last video. I'll probably put a link below so it doesn't get lost in the um, the stack or whatever. Uh, the train, I suppose, now that what it is. Um, I wanted to talk today about what I've learned um, from Hinduism and Zoroastrianism. Uh, I know I made videos on Hinduism before. Um, my first videos was before I read a really a whole lot of Hinduism, and as I got as I read more and more, I got more in touch with actual Hinduism and also Zoroastrianism, um, or the teachings of Zarathustra. That's another thing that I would like to really uh, touch upon um, in this video. Now, uh, one thing that yeah, I always felt that um, I didn't want to say that I was a Hindu because um, I didn't want to have to associate myself with the book. Be, be um, not uh, constrained by a book um, or books in this matter. But the more I read about Hinduism, the more I've realized that it's a lot like pantheism. Why I associate with being pantheism? Because it's free. There's a lot of freedom in it. Um, you can choose what to believe and what not to believe. Um, so the more I've learned about Hinduism the more um, I've come to realize that te technically, I mean, I'm still a pantheist, and my name's Lone Pantheist, but I'm also technically a Hindu. So, um, I don't know if I should <laughs> probably change the channel name or something to say it, but, um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, whereas before I was hearing, you know, scholars talk about it, people talk about it you know, on YouTube, stuff like that, and I, of course I read the Bhagavad Gita, and I um, really enjoyed that. I uh, got that information from Muji, and then Trishu Rav Shankar was another guy that I would watch. Um, so I was like, you know, I can check this out, you know, and then I was like, well, I want to read the Bhagavad Gita, and I found out the Bhagavad Gita was only a part of a much bigger collection of books, 18 books, <laughs> um, called the Mahabharata. So, yeah, I enjoyed reading uh, most of that. I haven't, uh, I've read, like, the last book, the first book, and then, like, uh, most of the middle books, I skipped like one. I think it was like four, uh, book four or something like that. Um, you know, I skimmed through it. So I skimmed through a lot of it, but uh, for the most part, uh, most of the books have I actually read through the entirety. Um, and apparently, you know, I was like, well, I'm just going to call them D and J because I couldn't pronounce. <laughs> the names were like a sentence long. Um, but J is apparently the grandson, I believe, of Arjuna. Arjuna. Um, it sounds like I'm saying Arjuna, but it's, I'm really saying Arjuna, it's just, it's my accent, so, yes, no disrespect there, but I thought it was kind of interesting, because the more I realize it, you know, in, in Hinduism in America, Krishna plays this very big role, but in Hinduism itself, it really, he plays a big role, but not, not as, you know, the other gods also play a very similar role, um, you know, in uh, throughout the Mahabharata, he's 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 mentioned um, a lot. You know, there's the whole uh, where the Bhagavad Gita comes from, where he gets him and Ar Arjuna. Um, but there's there's so many layers to Hinduism that I did not know, I didn't realize existed. I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, that's one of the reasons why, why I made my book. You know, I thought at first it was going to be really hard to sort of mix Zarathustraism and uh, Hinduism. Together, I was like, <laughs> I'm going to make a universe where this operates like that. Uh, unfortunately, the book hasn't been doing too well. I uh, hacked the price quite a bit. Um, but yes, I was kind of, you can you can borrow it for free. I'll probably post the link. You can at least borrow it and read it. Um, I'm not sure if there's any uh, errors in there because nobody's told me. I, when I looked through it, I didn't see any. But, um, you know, I could have overlooked it. You know, it's kind of like, yeah, you, you always think a baby's perfect, you know. Nobody's commented on it, so I can't really say if I, you know, did it uh, correctly. If it's all, you know, good. From what I know, it was uh, from when I posted it, but, you know, there could be some mistake. Uh, but I wish, you know, somebody would read it and say, oh, yeah, there they go. So I could fix it if there is. If there isn't, then, hey, oh well. But, uh, yeah, you know, and that's one of the reasons I mixed it, because I had to say some Zoroastrianism as well. Um, I thought it was interesting. Uh, technically, they're called fire worshippers, but um, the technical term would be light worshippers. 
because their god Ahura Mazda, Ahura means light and Mazda means wisdom. Um, so, you know, you have wise light, a wisdom of light, enlightenment, essentially. And I thought that was very interesting. A lot of the uh, the priests and people who partake in Zoroastrians, and they like to wear white. And they do sit around a fire and stuff like that. And I, I thought it was interesting because there, there's a lot of interest in light within that religion. And light itself is very fascinating in science. Um, but, yes, so more and more I've come to realize that I'm really in line with Hinduism. And, um, you know, uh, I just find it, there, there was a lot of layers. I, I didn't know about Shakti when I first was making videos about Hinduism. Uh, she's sort of like the feminine version. Or is that Prakti? One of those. <laughs> I, I should have looked that up. But uh, one's a feminine version of Brahman. I think they're actually both. Prakti is like the nature, and Shakti is the actual existence, the reality. And they're both feminine, but it's the feminine version of Brahman. Brahman and itself is actually a neutral term but uh you do have uh, brahma is uh, the male god and that he's he's everything within this universe or within this dream and then of course you have brahman who's all of them you know so you kind of think it's brahma is kind of like this universe and there's all the other universes of different brahmas but brahman is the underlying reality of it all um and i thought that was that was pretty interesting uh Shiva is also <laughs> very interesting. One thing you notice when, when you learn about the gods in Hinduism is that the more and more you learn about them, the more and more they just start, uh, they go from being having like a trait, and then they start saying, and then as they build up, they essentially declare, they declare themselves as Brahman or the Parabrahma, uh, Brahman. Um, and so they essentially just say that, you know, eventually after, after you, you do all this learning about them, you find out that uh that they're Brahman. <laughs> that, that that's you know, yeah, you know, you know, I'm a destroyer, but you know, this is also what I do. I help create and I'm also a destroyer and creator with, you know, Vishnu and then occasionally, you know, so but I also kinda of preserve and eventually before you know it, it's like, well I'm also the pair of Brahman. So basically the whole underlying thesis of it is that all these gods are essentially the same. And then the real underlying thesis of it is that you and I are essentially the same. Um, there are differences, and that's one thing that um, Hinduism sort of looks at, like, there, there, we have a universe, we're all a part of it, we're all connected into it, um, we all have the same origin, but yet it does recognize the fact that we are all different, uh, individually, culturally, and things like that. That's something that you don't really see a whole lot in religions. Uh, a lot of religions do tend to, um, they tend to state that they were the their ultimate truth and everybody else just diverged. Uh, Hinduism doesn't really see it that way and um, that's another interesting aspect of it. Uh, Zoroastrianism was the first religion to really develop the duality of light and dark um, which is really tough because uh, Armin which is darkness um, you know it, there, there's actually sex of Zoroastrian and just don't consider him to be in existence because he's opposite of God, if God's existence, Hermas is light, existence and everything, and Armin's darkness and nothingness, if he's nothingness, he doesn't exist, therefore he's nothing, and therefore there's no such thing as Armin. <laughs> but uh, basically, they're, they're, they get into the more psychological aspect. You know, good thoughts, good words, good actions. Um, that's their take on everything, and that helps you from bad thoughts, bad deeds, or bad thoughts, bad words, and bad actions, which is comes from uh, Armin. The, Armin's name also is Angra Manu, I believe. And Angra is kind of funny because you know it's, it sounds a lot like the English uh, word anger, which is when you know, mad. And, um, apparently, Armin is responsible for madness. So yes, um, to them, it was more of a duality of psychology. Kind of like jihad, the jihad within you, and Islam, but with them it was just more of like, you know, you have the underlying devil, okay, and then you have the inner self. The inner self is what you got to conquer. Outside, that will be conquered by Hermaz, but the inside, you have to conquer your own devil, the devil, I suppose. It's really sad that that religion kind of got overtaken by 
a religion that's kind of like it, but in a way that it's more strict. And so it's kind of sad to see that that religion went away. But um, other than that, you know, it's, it, it's still around. Um, hopefully it will remain at least in history books. But yes, so I didn't know a whole lot about it, so I kind of want to get on track with talking about Hinduism. That's why I'm making this video. I know it's over 10 minutes. I'm going to end it soon. But, um, you know, I want to get on track with talking about Hinduism because, you know, there's a lot of interesting developments that I've discovered. And, it, um, you know, I, I was not really um, sticking up for caste system uh, in my older videos, but I was fighting against it only if, uh, you know, I was like, well, you know, yeah, it's bad, but this is why most, most Hindus don't believe in caste system. But then I study the Varna system, which is the caste system. And I've discovered that there's a lot of interesting developments that happened when the Muslims invaded and also with the British. And the fact that there was never really a Dalit caste um, in older Hinduism. And the Varna system is only in a pyramid because of the population, not because of necessarily the hierarchy. Of course, you know, a priest, the Brahmins, would probably be a little bit higher up than the merchant, but they were the tasks that were assigned to uh, each member of that society and the way it functions actually sounds like it would actually be a good system when used properly. Um, you have to use it properly otherwise you know you get very bad results like you see kind of occasionally in the rural parts of India or at least I see in documentaries and I've heard from other people but uh, who are Hindu um, but for the most part if done correctly it would actually make a society operate a lot better in my opinion so you know I don't really see that as being something bad in Hinduism anymore. Um, I see that the changes that have occurred could be uh, classified as bad, but I don't really see that as being that bad. So I want to really address that in my later videos. But anyway, I'm gonna, that's all for now, YouTube. Uh, this is a duo video day, I suppose. A bonus video. <laughs> so that's all. See you later.